My name is Andrew Smarby, and today I am going to attempt to explain to you guys the concept of wabi-sabi um, and the differences in its use between Western and Eastern culture. Throughout my research, I had a really hard time understanding wabi-sabi. Right. Every time somebody was asked during an interview um, that was familiar with wabi-sabi, what is wabi-sabi, they all reply the same way. They pause and they say, well, that's hard to explain. <laughs> and that's because wabi-sabi encompasses such a broad range of things and emotions that it's really hard to pinpoint. Um, the best definition I could find for wabi-sabi is that it represents a comprehensive Japanese worldview or aesthetic centered around the acceptance of transience and imperfection. The aesthetic is sometimes described as one of beauty that is imperfect, impermanent, or incomplete. Wabi-sabi originated a long time ago in ancient Japan, and its precise origin is hard to pinpoint, but it has roots in Zen Buddhism and Taoism. To attempt a literal definition, you have to split the praise into its two parts. You have wabi, which originally was used to describe a hermit's way of life, um, separation, loneliness, kind of a sad vibe to it. And then it evolved to focus more on the simplicity of their way of life and also how their detachment from society allowed them more spiritual freedom and it was celebrated. Then you have sabi, which is more of the physical and aesthetic manifestation of the spiritual principles. So um, it focuses on natural imperfection, natural growth and decay of things, and the life cycle. So to experience and truly understand wabi-sabi, you have to try and kind of balance between the two. Um, they're all one concept, but you've got physical surroundings, and then you've got spiritual, and you've got to experience both at the same time. The reason Westerners have such a hard time um, understanding wabi-sabi, I think, is due to our culture and just like um, our main religions and all that. We are always so busy and need the newest and sleekest gadgets, and we don't really take time to settle down and just kind of soak in life. In Western culture, wabi-sabi has become more of a design fad than a philosophy. Um, in this photo, the designer labeled it as wabi-sabi, but they kind of missed the mark a little bit. Its first use in an aesthetic sense began with Japanese tea ceremony. And it came about as a way to simplify the space and the objects in it. And it just provided a better meditative atmosphere. The tea rooms are deliberately small and they usually have oddly small doors. And what this does is it promotes humility and unity. Um, even an emperor would have to bow to enter the door. And once you're inside, you know, it's cramped, you're close to each other, there's really no um, hierarchy. And it's oftentimes surrounded by nature. This is not wabi-sabi. Um, just because you don't want to clean your house or your room does not mean you're embracing wabi-sabi. Um, it's about simplifying um, and having a natural space more so, and not a dirty one. This is wabi-sabi. Um, although not ideal, a young dog teething on your table is very much so wabi-sabi. Um, they don't listen right away, but as they grow up and more behave, the teeth marks are still going to be there, um, and that serves as a reminder of the entire life cycle and just kind of the transience and the change. Uh, I hope this presentation has helped to shed some light on wabi-sabi. If you think that you may understand wabi-sabi, you're probably wrong. Um, <laughs> I still get a little flustered if somebody asks me the question, what is wabi-sabi? Um, a lot of people go on lifelong journeys to live by and try and comprehend the idea. Uh, today I want to ask you guys to keep wabi-sabi in the back of your head and pay attention to your surroundings when you go outside. I know it's kind of crappy out, but try and pick something out that you feel is wabi-sabi 
because in order to really understand it, you need to personalize it and make it your own. That's why I feel like you kind of have to personalize it in, in order to understand it. Yeah, that's a very interesting part when we kind of transfer to how we think about our bodies because um, it would be very not wabi-sabi to go have cosmetic surgery because your eyelids, you know, were baggy or the, you know, the bottoms of your eggs got baggy. It's an, it, an appreciation of the aging process is even fit to human beings, etc. Um, it is a difficult concept, but the more you think about it, the easier it becomes over time. And Andrew's right. The best thing to do is to look at things and ask yourself the question about it. Because it is understanding a culture that infuses painting and other sorts of art that come from the Far East in many, many cases, and um, it's not just, you know, the way we abuse the term to, to you know, pick up decorating style and say, well, I used all marks, you know, natural wood, it's very wabi-sabi, but, you know, if the wood has all been polished up and <laughs> made precise and perfect, it isn't very wabi-sabi at all. An Any example, other? I thought, with that, um, brought me back to one of my design projects, mm -hmm. um, I used wood slabs and I actually went out, found the log, and chopped it myself. And then I was at Hi or Hobby Lobby the other day, and I saw the same wood slabs, but they were like factory made. Like it's still real wood, but it's not like personalized. I guess remind me of that. Other questions and comments? Yes. Yeah. Um, first of all, I really liked the majority of your slides. I thought they were really strong. Good, <coughs> Um, I had a hard time though with like the text in your second slide, for example. Right, because that didn't hit, fit on the screen like it should have. But okay, um, but I felt like it. It told me what you were going to say before you said it. Uh huh. And it felt like y you almost were reading to the slide rather than rather than to us. Okay. And I feel like like just that image by itself is really powerful. Uh -huh. in, getting across that point. Okay. So Yeah, I would have done without the title and the physical spiritual too, because mm -hmm. I yeah, think the message is there without it. That's supposed to be split on each side as well. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, on on that slide number seven, um, I think it would have been better to illustrate it as just like wabi and sabi and then just arrows going between rather than zigzag pattern. Right. Because uh, that, like, the, the diagram there took me a while to, like, figure out what I was actually showing. Yeah, at first you suggest, it suggests you're going from country to country when you look at it. Oh, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> it it yeah. Uh, and I also maybe would have done without, uh, like, the rubber rectangles behind them. Okay. Uh, because it's very flow charty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. It, 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 it looks like PowerPoint, and then everything else is overly pictures. Yeah. yeah, I think that's good. Other comments? Well, I liked how you just arranged your presentation in general. I mean, you started off with you know the, the best definitions you can give, and then started to um, go into you know how it's how it differs by culture, even, um, and then you know literal examples of what is and what isn't. And now I have to clean my room. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this is probably, I can actually say this is the most frustrating research project I've ever done. Um, I spent probably more hours just trying to figure out what Wabi Sabi was um, than I did on the presentation. And 
paper and whatnot. So. You'll thank me in two years. I right. think. <laughs> it's a very, very interesting, very important point of comparison culturally to begin with. And it really will come to mind. If you keep it in mind and search for it, you're going to see that it really affects the way you look at design products now. Thank you, Andrew.